Selamat pagi semua hadirin untuk bersama menuju ke satu lagi catatan sejarah di Taiping. Kali ini yang kali pertama mana-mana program lebih awal daripada <laughs> kerana duta is very good duta dari Bosnia came very fast from Kuala Lumpur <laughs> because he won't get speed trap sebagai juru acara hari ini samping menjadi program pengurusi program rakyat larut matang selama khususnya tapi typing dan kementing dengan penuh gembiranya mengalurkan kedatangan His Excellency Dr. Emit Hadzi Kadunik The Ambassador of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Walaupun kehadiran His Excellency Dr. Amir adalah kali kedua ke Taiping, tetapi kami rasa syukur yang mulia dapat bersama kita sekali lagi. Even though it's the second year in running, for his presence in is indeed a blessing to Taiping. Yang turut bersama hari ini. Yang bersejarah ini ialah Yang amat bahagia orang kaya Menteri Pada Ketuan Dato' Haji Wan Muhammad Isa bin Dato' Haji Wan Muhammad Razali Orang kaya, orang besar jajahan Lalu Matang Selama Which means he is the territorial chief of the district Representative Duli Amah Mulia Paduka Sri Sultan Lapera <coughs> Yang bahagia Dato' Haji Abdul Rahim bin Mat Arif, Muhammad Arif YDP MPT, also known as the Mayor of the Taiping Town. <laughs> Yang berusaha Encik Zakaria, Wakil Adun Kementing. Yang berhormat Injira Muhammad Fazil. Past District Governor, Dato' Arif, you start here. Past District Governor, Siti Zubaida. As representative of our District Governor, Dr. Baskaran. Rotary Malaysia District 3300 Environment Sustainability Chairman Dr. Diliban Nair was responsible for getting the 50 trees from free at a very special price. <laughs> District Assistant Governor Ong Hin Hai, Presidents and Past Presidents of Rotary Club from Malawati, Central Damansara, Ipo, Ipo South, Kolakangsa, Kamunting, Kriang, Taiping Lake, and Kinta and my fellow Rotarians of Bukit Larut Centennial. Pegawai Pejabat Pendidikan Daerah LMS. Okay, uh, Pegawai-Pegawai Bulan Sabit Merah, Ibu Pejabat Negeri Perak. Pelajar-pelajar Sekolah Menengah Kemunting Bakti dan Sekolah Menengah Pekerjaan Panglima. Pelajar-pelajar Legiu College Bukit Merah Resort bersama lecturer mereka, pensyarah mereka. Chief Executive of Legiu College in Jailani. Datuk-datuk, datin-datin, ketua pejabat kerajaan dan para hadirin. Semenjak tahun 2010, Rotary Club kami sentiasa membawa duta-duta negara bersama meraihkan Hari Antarabangsa Keamanan di Taiping. Sedangkan Taiping bermakna Town of Everlasting Peace, aman selama-lamanya. Perayaan sebagai ini sebagai ini mestilah diutamakan supaya bukan saja Jangan lupakan sejarah tetapi mentabatkan atau menguat, mengkukuhkan lagi suasana sentiasa aman damai di bandar ini Yang juga menjadi tunjuk ajar kepada seluruh rakyat Malaysia Mohon mohon untuk bercakap sedikit dalam bahasa Inggeris sebab kehadiran duta luar, duta negara luar As I've been saying, the annual peace celebration should only be uh, remind us about the history Not only remind us about the history but also to reinforce its values and build on a stronger foundation to continue its legacy and prevent any form of disruption to create chaos in the beautiful paradise which call our town is situated in the resort to be appropriately placed. We should, we should strive to be an example to for Malaysia to show our due diligence in keeping the harmony and hopefully despite typing has been branded as heritage town we have Penang and Melaka as the designated UNESCO heritage town. Melaka has been famous for the history of Bandar Sejarah. It's a far-fetched dream. One day, the idea of typing, which has already been uh, designated as Bandar Warisan heritage town, could be uh, 
could be, yeah, this is a dream, rebranded as Bandar Warisan Keamanan, Peace Heritage Town. Without further ado, I'd like to call upon the Director of Attack Typing, Yang Berusa Engineer Halim Azhar bin Yatim, for his opening speech of welcome as the host today's program. Mr. Halim? Today, I am pleased as ATTAC be a part of the World Peace Day campaign where more than 5,000 schools is about 120 countries participate worldwide. Sustainable development is the cash word that we all need to become acquainted with and to practice so that our children and the children for generations to come can reap the benefit of this beautiful land we call Taiping. Whether we are from educational institutions, government agencies, private sectors, NGOs, or community groups, whether we live in cities or kampong, we are all here. Owning ourselves and our children to be steward of the environmental and resources with which we are all blessed with. The, the trees that we plant today, once properly maintained, will benefit our country in the future. May they thrive and provide both hope and shades for many years to come. In closing, let, let us all resolve to be better person in the school of peace so that our homes and neighbors, neighborhoods of our country can radiate peace. I wish everybody a very meaningful and inspiring world peace day. Thank you. I call upon the current president, Dr. M. Sri Dharan, to deliver his address. Our club has been actively involved in peace activities for almost 10 years. And our past president, Dr. Rajendran, has been an instrument for founding the Aman Ahad, or what we call as Peace Sunday program, in the year of 2014. Our YDP, Dr. Rahim, has shown enough leadership quality to make peace event as one of Taiping's anchor programs since his arrival. Only unfortunate, the Majlis Masyarakat Civil has been disbanded, yet our club still trying our best to do something to make Taiping as a capital of peace in Malaysia. Uh, we also hope MPT Majlis Masyarakat Taiping will uh, continue to support our program in whatever way can so that our effort will, be, will carry its weightage to penetrate the minds of Taiping folks. Among the aim is to bring school children for the program is to inculcate essence of peace and love for the environment. Okay, and in Malaysia, we all know we are all a multiracial society, and we have been living in peace for many years. Okay, so this is an important event for us. We always say God gave the earth for for us to live in and pray to God for the for that, but at the same time, we show total disregard to the environment. That is why our environment has totally changed and we are, we are paying for our ignorance. If we have done, if we have done change, Mother Nature will be causing uh, several chaos in, we in weather conditions which already started every part of the world, including Malaysia. Now, the weather department has mentioned that uh, the rain monsoon has come forward starting from this month to until the November. So we'll be facing a lot of heavy rains, especially typing, don't have to tell, every day it's been raining. Anyway, um, that is, it is not too late to undo the damage and we have to change our attitude. Peace does, does not mean act of no war, but it starts with peace within ourselves, peace with our family and neighbor, and peace with the environment. Only with this all three balance, we will achieve peace permanently. And before I go off, i like to mention something said by former President uh, Ronald Reagan. Peace is not absence of conflict. It is the ability to handle conflict by peaceful means. I hope our message today will bear fruit in the near future. Thus, without much, I end my speech with a vote of thanks to all who are present. Thank you very much. Salam Sejahtera, Salam Rotary, and a very good morning. <coughs> His Excellency, Dr. Mir Hazik Kaduni, Ambassador of Bosnia and Herzegovina, Yang Berusaha, 
Yang amat bahagia orang kaya menteri Paduka Tuan Datuk Haji Wan Muhammad Isa bin Datuk Haji Muhammad Wan Razali Orang besar jajahan larut matang dan selama Yang amat bahagia Datuk Haji Abdul Rahim bin Muhammad Arif YDP Majlis Perbandahan Taiping Yang berusaha Engineer Halim Azhar Yatim Director of ADEC President Rotary Club Bukit Larut Centennial Dr. M. Sridharan, Organizing Chairman, Rotarian Past President, Dr. V. K. Rajendran, RC Bukit Larut, Centennial, Rotary Assistant Governor Group 3, Ong Heng Hai, Rotary Action Group on Environmental Sustainable, Dr. Dilip Naya, Distinguished Guests, Students, Ladies and gentlemen, and my fellow Rotarians, it's indeed an honour to be here this morning, and I bring greetings from Dr. Bashkaran, our District Governor of Rotary District 3300, who is unable to be with us today because of a previous engagement. Now, since its inception in 1905, Rotary has been a champion for peace. We adopted a resolution that our organization lend its influence to the maintenance of peace among nations of the world. We incorporated Rotary, Rotary into Rotary's constitution the goal to aid in the advancement of international peace and goodwill through fellowship in the ideal of service. And through this fellowship of service and advocating peace, 40 years later, in 1945, Rotary played a key role in forming the United Nations, when almost 50 Rotarians served as delegates, advisors, or consultants at the United Nations Charter Conference in San Francisco, California, in the US. Every year since then, Rotary selects about 100 professionals from around the world to be Rotary Peace Fellows, who receive fellowships to study in one, in one of our six peace centres, earning either a master's degree or a professional certificate in areas such as human rights, international politics, public health, and development. Today, Rotary has already sponsored more than 1,500 peace scholars worldwide. In Malaysia, we have benefited uh, with four peace scholars that we have sponsored uh, over the last few years. And the nearest peace uh, uh, university that we have is in Thailand. So we send our peace scholars to Thailand. Now, 113 years later today, there are 1.2 million Rotarians from over 33,000 clubs worldwide who are involved in peace projects, incorporating in the many humanitarian service projects we carry out internationally. Rotary being a service organization, the world's first service organization, our principle, our motto is to carry out humanitarian service. And we involve ourselves in six areas, including literacy basic education, maternal and health care, water sanitation, economic and community development, disease prevention and treatment, and of course, peace and conflict resolution has always been our main trust in all the areas that we carry out our service. Now again, on behalf of our district governor, Dr. Bashkaran, we welcome this initiative of the Taiping Peace Initiative and promoting Taiping as a center for peace. Uh, looks like Taiping is, yesterday we have Taiping as the most beautiful country, a state, and today we have Taiping as a peace initiative. I think Taiping is going to make a mark in Malaysia. Now in Malaysia, if uh, many of you are not aware, in total we have about 3,000 over Rotarians spread from uh, police right down to 
uh, Johor, including Sabah and Sarawak, we have about 150 Rotary Clubs. We have about um, 3,000 road tractors who are students like yourself. Uh, as our partners in service, we have about 5,000 in tractors who are students in the secondary schools. So we have a family of Rotary, from road tractors, road tractors to Rotarians, who together work and um, promote peace and understanding. We thank the Rotary Club of Bukit Rarut Centennial and its partner organizations in Taiping, the Taiping Municipal Council, for this morning's event. And we look forward to your continuous support in Rotary's efforts. The Rotary District Action Group for Environmental Sustainability, led by Chairman Dr. Dilip Nair, who has who lead this program by uh, initiating or getting the sponsorship of 50 three samplings to be planted as part of promoting peace and goodwill. He actually came up all the way from KL with 50 samples of trees uh, yesterday evening. And I think that is really commendable. Thank you, uh, Dr. Dilipan. <laughs> and to all the Rotary Clubs present, three Rotary Clubs, Rotary Club of Kuala Kangsa, Rotary Club of Kamunting, Rotary Club of uh, Taiping Lake, and uh, of course, Rotary Club Bukit Centennial, Thank you for being here and the other Rotary Clubs who are present. Uh, in conclusion, my spouse, Rotarian, President Kamaru and I wish this program a success and we look forward to jointly as a community, as Malaysians, to advocate and promote peace and international understanding through fellowship within our country and the countries of the world. With that, I thank you. Thank you, Pastor Mr. Governor Siddhisvaira. So, uh, without much ado, uh, I'd like to invite His Excellency, Dr. Emir uh, Hatsuk Kadunik, to deliver his keynote address. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu, and very good morning. It is uh, really my great honor to be in Taiping uh, for this Peace Day celebration. This time as a keynote speaker at the International Seminar on Peace and Human Rights. Uh, I'm happy to be part of this advanced education and training college. Uh, well, uh, regarding my talk today, I will be speaking about uh, some specific peace building story that is related to my country, to Bosnia and Herzegovina. And I hope that especially students will learn from this case. And uh, it is uh, so far it is a success story, thank God. And um, I would like to share our experience with all of you. So regarding my talk today, first of all, please allow me to give some background on my presentation. My topic is about factors or causes for effective peace building. It is about the case of Bosnia and Herzegovina and Dayton Peace Agreement. In this regard, the question is, the first question that comes to my mind is, uh, what are these factors? What are these causes for peace building? for effective peace building. Second, what is, what is peace building itself? What is effective peace building? And finally, in the third part, I deal with a specific case. In this respect, it is about Bosnia and Herzegovina and the Dayton Peace Agreement. How this peace agreement has evolved, progressed, and advanced in Bosnia, and what factors have contributed to this. So let me start from the first part. Let me briefly speak about diverse causes, diverse factors for peace building, for effective peace building. First of all, there are different explanatory factors at different levels of analysis within different theoretical frameworks that can be analyzed in any peace building case. Any factor, any cause, can be of interest to the extent that it affects peace building. 
So one can analyze individual political leaders, for example, um, and uh, from different national backgrounds, ideological backgrounds. Uh, this is individual level of analysis. Uh, it is about human factors in this regard. For example, one can analyze characteristic decision making, their operational code, their belief systems, their leadership traits, whether they perceive others as friendly or hostile, whether their strategy is cooperation or conflict. It is up to individuals to make up their mind in this regard. One can also analyze domestic factors. This is national level of analysis. It includes ideology, identity, collective identity, I mean, nationalism, political culture, and so on and so forth. So this is about most dominant domestic factors and social forces and their impact on peace building. Whether these factors are inclusive or exclusive, whether they are more moderate or more extreme. And finally, one can analyze, one can explore aspects that contribute to peace building, external aspects, international aspects that contribute to peace building as well. These factors represent different international efforts to implement, in this case, Dayton Peace Agreement and consolidate a war to our country. International constraints are different in their nature. From one side, peace building can be supported with the presence of international military force with clearly defined peacekeeping mandate. Military force is expected to prevent violence. International military force with peacekeeping mandate is expected to prevent violence and serves as a part of deterrent strategy. In other words, it separates opponents and discourages any local adversary from prolonging the crisis. This kind of military engagement reflects the first generation of peacekeeping. Peace building can also be supported with non-military presence of relevant international, regional, or even local organizations. These peace building structures reflect multi-dimensional approach. So while they focus primarily on the civilian implementation of any settlement, the military side covers mainly security issues. So multi-dimensional peace missions have become the model for contemporary peace building or peace promotions. They seek not only to prevent the crisis, the conflict, the violence, but also to address the root causes of any problem. Now let me speak. Now let me uh, let me speak briefly about uh, concept. Let me speak briefly about the concept of peace building. Uh, I can offer several definitions here that that have been discussed uh, by various uh, scholars. Some of them argue that peace building reflects various efforts in support of political, social, institutional transformation necessary to bring about lasting peace. Other use peace building as, uh, as uh, peacemaking, peace, peacekeeping, or conflict prevention. I like the definition of peace building as the post-settlement, as the post-settlement period, which includes implementation of peace agreement. According to this approach, peace building begins with a settlement, with a peace treaty, with a peace deal between different parties. In our case, it is a Dayton peace agreement that stopped the war in 1995 and provided framework for peace for us in Bosnia and Herzegovina. And finally, let me elaborate on the, on the last part, on the peace treaty itself, on Dayton peace agreement. So the post-war settlement in Bosnia was not a product of um, choices of the winning party. It was not a product of the vic victory on the battlefield of one side over the other side. The post-war political order in my country, in Bosnia and Herzegovina, was a product of a negotiated settlement. Just to remind ourselves, the general framework agreement 
for peace in Bosnia and Herzegovina, which is better known as the Dayton Peace Agreement, was negotiated and drafted at the military base at Wright Patterson Air Force Base in Dayton, Ohio, United States of America, in November 1995. It was finally signed in Paris by leaders of Bosnia, Federal Republic of Yugoslavia, and Croatia on December 14, 1995. And finally, it was witnessed by um, representatives from the United States, France, Germany, UK, Spain, and Russia. In other words, settlement, peace settlement in Bosnia was a product of peace negotiation backed by the United States, but also involved other key international actors, UN Security Council members in their different capacities. Key regional actors, Serbia, Croatia, Bosnia, and local key local constituencies, Bosnian government and other opposing groups. This particular agreement stopped the war that lasted for more than three years and resulted with genocide in Srebrenica in July 1995. Dayton Agreement gave the chance for peace building in Bosnia since 1995. Now, the question is what individual, what domestic, what international, non-military and military constraints or factors contributed to peace building in Bosnia in the last 23 years? What was, when we talk about international causes, what was their international mandate? What was their composition and coherence? What was their nature and scope of activities? These are the key questions. And understanding the whole case might be helpful for understanding other more or less successful peace building cases. Now, let me speak more specifically about international military missions as one part of the peace building story in my country. First of all, their international mandate was defined in the Dayton Peace Agreement itself. It was specified in the Annex 1A of the agreement uh, and deployment of powerful international military force has been mentioned there already during negotiation and by conclusion of this peace treaty. Second, it was also authorized with relevant international decisions. For example, the UN Security Council voted unanimously to authorize the implementation force, so-called IFOR, as NATO-led military mission. And this is Security Council Resolution 1031 from 1995. 60,000 troops were initially deployed to Bosnia with a duty of supporting immediate peace implementation, upholding ceasefire, preventing violence, and uh, securing the peace. UN Security Council also authorized other military missions in Bosnia, stabilization force that replaced I-4, and then finally EU-4 that replaced stabilization force. In other words, these international missions in Bosnia passed through several phases reflecting situation on the ground and different dimensions of peace building. Third, these international forces have a respectful and multinational composition from various countries. Initially, the largest share was provided by NATO members such as U US, UK, and France, among whom the most powerful country, the US, contributed the largest share, and then other NATO and non-NATO members such as Poland, Turkey, Russia, Malaysia, and others, they also contributed. It was a unique peacekeeping force and first military mission of such kind after the World War II. With such diversity, cohesion, coherence, it provided the most valuable lessons for future peace operations. All, all these military missions from I-4, initial force, 60,000 troops, then S-4, and then EU-4, 
which is still present, were gradually reducing their numbers in Bosnia. So their initial number, as I said, was 60,000. Strong force from late 1995 was reduced to 35,000 one year later. By 2004, that number was reduced to 7,000. By 2012, it was below 1,000. And today, 2018, only several hundred of foreign troops remain in Bosnia from mainly EU member countries and serving under EU4. This was a clear indication of a steady success of the military implementation of the peace process, which includes disarmament that was successful, necessary reduction of local forces, again successful, their integration, we got single Ministry of Defense, single chain of command, single Bosnian army that used to be, that, was, that is now composed of uh, forces that used to fight each other. Now they are under single Ministry of Defense. This is, again, again another success story. So I may also add that not a single foreign soldier died, uh, died as a result of any hostility in Bosnia and Herzegovina throughout peace implementation. This means that the local people accepted uh, peace that has been signed and accepted foreign troops as well. Now, for the last part, let me speak more specifically about international non-military missions in Bosnia that contributed to peace building as well. They have included diverse international and regional non-military structures with renewed operations and mandates to implement the civilian part of the Dayton Peace Agreement. First of all, they included different missions from the United Nations to promote democracy, human rights, rule of law, refugee return, and so on and so forth. The United Nations Security Council endorsed a new UN mission with two key components. Uh, the one was the United Nations International Police Task Force, UNIPTF, and the second was UN Civil Affairs. UNIPTF monitored law enforcement activities as well as law enforcement facilities. It also advised and trained law enforcement personnel. The UN Civil Affairs was tasked with humanitarian relief, refugees, human rights, election, economic reconstruction, and similar. The UN also established, this was a little bit earlier during wartime, International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia, ICTY, which is still active, to prosecute serious violations of international humanitarian law committed during wars in ex-Yugoslavia with indirect effects on peace building. The UN mission with those two companies that I mentioned earlier was terminated in 2002 in accordance with UN Security Council Resolution, again, 1423, police mission of IPTF has been transformed to the European Union police mission under the European Security and Defense Policy. And the UN Civil Affairs has been um, extended with other UN agencies such as UNDP, UNHCR, UNESCO, and so on and so forth. Second, peace building also involved European-based organizations such as the European Union and Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe. However, the most important non-military external factor has been the Office of High Representative that was created immediately after the signing of the Dayton Peace Agreement. The purpose of the High Representative in Bosnia was to oversee the civilian implementation of the peace treaty. These high representatives were former prime ministers, foreign ministers, uh, peace negotiators, prominent diplomats from different countries such as Sweden, Germany, UK, Spain, uh, uh, Slovakia, and so on and so forth. At the same time, OHR, or Office for High Representative, served the countries that were involved in the implementation of the Dayton Agreement through the Peace Implementation Council. This Peace Implementation Council is an international body composed of 55 countries and agencies which was established at the Peace Implementation Conference in London in December 1995. And in conclusion, 
all these uh, non-military factors facilitated in my country, in Bosnia and Herzegovina, reconstruction, reconciliation between different groups, election and peaceful transition of government, power, refugee return, rule of law, judiciary reform, freedom of movement, institutional reforms, respect of human rights, and so on and so forth. These are all elements for effective peace building. And together with military factors, they truly reflected multi-dimensional approach in peace building. Okay, I thank you for your attention. I hope you get some knowledge on Bosnia and on the peace building in my country. Uh, it is a success story, even though we, uh, we are still uh, uh, on the way to join the EU, we have managed uh, so many uh, reforms within the country. As I said, in 1995, we used to have three different military structures that used to fight each other. And then as a result of these factors, we have a common defense system, common intelligence system, we have common custom, we have integrated country. Thank you very much and looking forward to discussing with you. Dan Saudara, I'd like to call upon Yang Bahagia Dato Abdul Rahim to the stage to deliver his closing remarks. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning. <coughs> His Excellency, Dr. Emir Hezekajunik, Ambassador of Bosnia Herzegovina, Yang Bahagia, Orang Kaya, Menteri Pada Ketuan Yang bagi Datuk Haji Wan Muhammad Isa bin Datuk Haji Muhammad Razali Orang Besar Jajahan Larut Matang dan Selam Yang berusaha Engineer Halim Azhar bin Yatim The Director of Attack Typing Yang berusaha Puan Siti Zubaidah Past District Governor Rotary Malaysia, District 3300, representing the District Governor. Yang Bruce, President Rotary Club, Bukit, Rotary Club Bukit Larut Centennial, Dr. Stephen, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is indeed a great honor to be present today to witness another historic event in Taiping, which is well known for its many firsts. We appreciate the presence of His Excellency Dr. Amir Hezekadunik, Ambassador of Bosnia and Herzegovina, <coughs> who had given us an inspirational speech on world peace and also the upcoming Peace Pool inauguration and tree planting, which will become the first Peace Pool inaugurated in the college in Malaysia. His Excellency is the appropriate person to speak on the subject matter as Bosnia and Herzegovina had undergone many years of internal war, which had cost many lives, and to be exact, exactly 100 years this year, since the first annexation of Bosnia and Herzegovina by Syria, which the Serbs, Croats, and Slovenes on October 26, 1918, which later changed to Yugoslavia in 1929. After losing many lives, including the genocides, Bosnian voters chose independence and President Eliza Isaac Vigovic declared the nation as an independent state in March 1992. <coughs> Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the Rotary Club of Bukit Larut Centennial, early name Bukit Merah Lake Town, has initiated the invitation to embassies and high commissioners to grace Taiping to commemorate the World Peace Day since the year 2010. Many heads of missions, including Poland, Netherlands, Germany, Belgium, India, have attended the event before. And also UNDP representatives have laid their footsteps in Taiping for the occasion in the past. Even I was told that the Deputy Secretary General of UN, Ms. Judy Cheng, gave a peace lecture here in Taiping in 2012. In Taiping, we have the Dataran Kebenar Mayan, the Peace Park, where Taiping first peace pole is situated at the Taiping Lake Garden to commemorate the World Peace Day. <coughs> and the Council will continue to support the annual peace program. Just to highlight how important this yearly event is, 
that peace is not a mere words, but action. At times, it's not easy to make peace, but much more difficult to maintain peace. We in Malaysia have managed to do that since independence. We have, different, we have our differences, but in the end, only unity can only unity can bring about economic, economic development in the right, right direction. I hereby thank all the parties involved, especially His Excellency Dr. Amir, Ad Tech Typing, led by Engineer Halim and his team, the Rotary District Governor and his team, SMK Taman Panglima, SMK Kemunting Bakti, Lakeview College, Bukit Merah Resort, Rotary Clubs from Kulakangsa, Kemunting, Taiping, Taiping Lake, Ipoh, Malawati, Central Mansara, and finally, not forgetting the program host, Rotary Club of Bukit Laru Centennial, and uh, especially Dr. Legenda and team. Thank you. Wabillahi Taufiq wa Hidayah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I would like to call upon the Director of Attack Typing, Engineer Halim, Engineer Halim Azhar, to give a special remembrance gift to His Excellency. present to the MPT's moment to, to our special guest, His Excellency. <laughs> President of Rotary Club, Dr. Sri, from Kila Road Centennial, I present the moment to past district governor. highlight of the program is all of us agent outside the hall for the peaceful and the tree planting ceremony. <laughs> <laughs> 